So good morning, everyone. Uh, it's very nice to be back again to present online, uh, online to present live, um, which is a challenge again after the online talks. Um, but I'm here to present uh, the study that we've been doing actually with a funding from a grant from the University of Trento this year. Um, together with the Fundazione Mac, obviously, at the Biotremology uh, the, the, uh, uh, Lab. Uh, but this study was done in collaboration with other two institutes, uh, both from Italy, the Consiglio Nazionale di Ricerca, uh, more specifically in Torino, and the Università di Bari. And in this study, we have um, tested the interference of the vibrational disruption that Valerio and Raquel and all my colleagues have talked about uh, with vector-borne plant pathogen transmission. So to start, since this is a topic a bit different uh, from the ones we have seen during these days, uh, vector-borne plant pathogens, they are a big problem in agriculture. As Raquel mentioned, uh, for example, with the Flavescens doré, there is a phytoplasma that attacks the, the vitae. Um, if you have the infection of the plants uh, according to the percentage of infection on your vineyards, you might have to um, devastate this, the entire crops. So this can uh, cause uh, big economical losses. The example of the Flavescens doré, which is a very important pest in uh, Trentino, uh, but also in uh, many other places, has the presence of a vector. So the system of the vector-borne pathogens, it requires these three different components. So you need the pathogen, which in this case is the phytoplasma. You need the vector, which is in this case the leaf hopper. And you need the host, which is a plant, in this case, the, the vineyards. And in order to uh, cause the infection, you need a series of events for the plant pathogen to infect, infest the host plant. So for example here, you need the vector that feeds on an infected plant. He acquires the pathogen and then he inoculates a healthy plant, again by feeding. Uh, and after this, with the inoculation of the, of the phytoplasm, on, uh, phytoplasm on the plant, we have the infected plant again. As Raquel also mentioned, for Flavescens doré, the, currently the control that we have for this disease is mainly made targeting the vector of the phytoplasma, which requires the use of pesticides. And the only biological alternative that we have until now is the vibrational disruption. Interestingly, the vibrational disruption has been shown uh, by Avosani, <laughs> here we have it, um, to affect a feeding behavior. So as Raquel mentioned, we have found in these past years that the vibrational disruption can not only interfere with mating, but with other important biological behaviors. In this case, they found out that the feeding behavior was altered, especially with a reduction of ingestion of xylem. So now that we understand that the feeding behavior is directly associated with uh, pathogen transmission, we could hypothesize that if we alter the feeding behavior, we could reduce the pathogen transmission, and therefore we could explore uh, the alternative of vibrational disruption as a biological control technique for vector-borne pathogens. So in order to answer this question, uh, the, our objective, objective was to evaluate whether and how vibrational disruption could interfere with feeding behavior of a vector and the transmission of a vector-borne pathogen. And our hypothesis was that with vibrations on the plants, the insects will feed less and therefore transmit less the pathogen. 
we have chosen to use as a model a uh, vector, Eucelidius variegatus, and the pathogen, the chrysanthemum yellows, which is a phytoplasma. And our host plant was a daisy. This insect is a phloem sucking insect, and actually we have chosen it as a model because it's a similar system to Scaphoideus titanus, which is actually the target of our study, ideally. Uh, but since in studies in greenhouses, uh, the rearing and the microinjection of phytoplasma is easier with the Ocellidus variegatus, we decided to start this experiment that was very complex with a model and to later on, according to the result, um, bring it to scaphoideus. So we have divided our experiment into four parts. The first one was to characterize the vibrational signal of the species that was still unknown. The second one was to construct a vibrational disruption according to the signals of the species. The third part was uh, doing an experimental, uh, an experiment on feeding behavior. And the fourth part was actually testing if the inoculation and acquisition of this phytoplasma could be um, interfered by the presence of a vibrational disruption noise. So for the first part, uh, the characteri characterization of the vibrational signals, uh, we performed this experiment in January and February of this year in Fundazione MAC. Uh, we have recorded both males and females with a laser vibrometer and analyzed it in the corresponding softwares. And we have found out that both males and females emit signals vibration, signal vibrations, including duets, um, and I'm gonna show here a short video just to understand how their signals are. So that was the, the male, of course, doing the, the signals. And once understanding that both of them were emitting signals and understanding the frequencies of these signals, we constructed a vibrational disruption noise, which was basically a white noise covering the signals, since in order to create a proper vibrational noise that could be very specific for the species, we would need longer time, a uh, longer time for studies. And as I said, we recorded them in January. We decided to cover the, the whole range of, of frequencies. And you can hear here the... Um, I'm sorry, may you all death. <laughs> okay, so this is the vibrational noise. And so there we could finally start our experiments. Uh, the first part was, the, uh, as I said, the feeding behavior. We work with the daisy plants and uh, Eucelidus variegatus with EPG. So basically the system here is um, have, it's a circuit and then you have the insect that is connected with a golden wire and an electrode that is inserted in the plant. And this circuit is completed when the insect inserts the stylet inside the plant and then you have um, flowing of um, of voltage that is recorded by the, by the computer. And with these floats of uh, voltage, we can find the patterns on the software and try to characterize the feeding behavior, uh, especially looking for xylem and phloem ingest ingestion. In this species, uh, as I said, is a phloem uh, sucking insect, and all the phytoplasmas are transmitting the disease by phloem, so this was also a very important pattern for us. So as preliminary results, we found out that the insects that actually fed in phloem, they had a xylem ingestion phase that seemed to be longer. But even finding alterations on feeding behavior, we wonder if this could really ensure the reduction of pathogen transmission. Because sometimes we have uh, differences in behaviors, but it doesn't mean that the, your final goal is actually achieved. So in this sense, after finding the alteration of feeding behavior, we first tested if the vibrations could reduce the inoculation of the CY phytoplasm by infected insects. 
So in this case, we used healthy plants and infected insects. And what we did was we used the um, vibrational plates that have been mentioned as well by my colleagues from CBC. They are also exposed outside, so you can see it later. These vibrations were emitting the vibrational disruption that I showed before. We used healthy plants because we wanted to understand if by inserting the insects infected by CY and feeding there, they could, get in, they could infect the plants. And then we, of course, divided the treatments in vibrations on and vibrations on, trying to find a difference between the two treatments. All the insects were given 72 hours in order to do the inoculation on plants. Then they were removed, and the plants were given two weeks for latency period. Then all the plants were sampled, the DNA was extracted, and an, a, a real-time PCR was performed. So for the plants, what we have seen is that even uh, though the negative plants, the ones not infected by CY, did not differ, in vibration on, which is the red here, the concentrations of phytoplasma were low or medium, whether in vibration off, we had no concentrations in low, most of them were medium or high. So then we decided to do um, an analysis on the actual concentration of phytoplasma uh, on, on, the, um, on the plants. And we saw that, yes, uh, actually on when the vibrations were on, there was a lower rate of uh, phytoplasma on the plants. So the concentration was reduced by the vibrations. Then, by last, we also wanted to understand if the vibrations could reduce the acquisition of the phytoplasma by the insects when they were feeding on infected plants. So this time, the, the treatments were inverted. We had infected plants with the phytoplasma and healthy insects. The experimental design was the same, so we would have vibration on and vibration off, of course, and we were inserting five uh, insects per plant, healthy insects, and we left them 72 hours in order to acquire the phytoplasma, and then we removed the insects from the plant and gave them two weeks for the latency. Uh, after this, all the insects, uh, we ex make the DNA extraction from the insects and the real-time PCR. And unfortunately for this part uh, of the insects, we found out uh, very few uh, positive results. So actually most of our insects were negative. Uh, so I don't have much uh, things yet, much results to show about this. But trying to put all the results together that I have presented today, since we saw that with APG, the feeding behavior was changed, especially that the xylem ingestion was higher in the insect feeding phloem. According to literature, um, we know that the phloem feeders, so these ones that are also transmitting phytoplasm, uh, when the xylem activity is longer than usual, it could be related to plant resistance on, or unsuitability. So maybe the vibrations were really causing uh, to the insects to associate with the unstability, or even the plant was uh, reacting somehow that we don't know. Uh, and these uh, results from EPG, they are actually explaining well why we found low concentrations of the phytoplasma on the vibrations uh, on plants that were exposed to vibrations. Regarding the insects, a slightly higher number of insects acquire CY on uh, Vibron. This could be really that there are no differences in the acquisition. However, uh, we have hypothesized some things like uh, we have worked with adults and usually nymphs are better to acquire the phytoplasma. Also, the latency period that we gave after the acquisition could not have been long enough. And most importantly, uh, understanding now that 
we had some results, even if we have created a, a vibrational signal, which was um, an, an entire white noise, uh, we could work better on this disturbing noise to make it, make it more um, specific and also try different amplitudes because we know also the amplitude could interfere with the, with the, with the disruption, so there is still a lot to work uh, with this. However, these are promising results that vibrations could actually reduce the phytoplasma transmission. So with this, I would like to thank uh, everyone that helped with this work. All my um, co-authors, they were really hardworking because we have done this in basically seven, eight months. Um, and yeah, I thank all the, the fundings and all the institutions and all of you.